Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Lexi. I work here at the Bean Museum. Um, and this is Life Science Live. Welcome. Um, today, I'm going to present to you some of our Asian animals in um, our Asian animal exhibit. Um, I picked three to highlight. Um, and so we're going to go through those three. And we're going to talk about their adaptations. And so if you don't know what an adaptation is, an adaptation is a trait that an animal or a plant or an organism has in order to make it um, survive better. And so it's something that it's developed that makes it unique, um, that helps it survive better in the place it lives um, to be able to be uh, more successful in its life. And so we're gonna talk about three animals and their adaptations. Um, and if you have any questions during this um, broadcast, you can just comment them and I will look at them um, throughout the, the broadcast, but also at the end and try to answer as many as I can. If I don't get to them, um, somebody else will get back on and post um, the answers to your questions. So please ask questions. Um, we love to hear from you guys, and um, we're going to get started and talk about some cool animal adaptations. I'm also just going to be holding um, the camera, so I'll try to keep it as steady as I can um, so you can see these animals and their specific adaptations. Um, but first, we're going to talk about the snow leopard. So let me switch this around. So here is the snow leopard. Um, snow leopards are in the class, or in the, um, yeah, in the class mammalia, so they're mammals. Um, they're in the order Carnivora. They're in the family um, Felidae, and their genus and species is Panthera eucea. And so these um, snow leopards are found in the Himalayan and Siberian mountains. So they live really, really high up in high elevations, um, which create um, special, unique adaptations for them. Um, that area is really cold. It has a very cold climate. Um, it's very windy and snowy, and so they have to adapt to live in that area um, to be able to succeed and to survive. Um, and so they are threatened because of their beautiful coat. Um, we don't know how many are in the wild, but um, it's probably about 3,000 to 2,000 snow leopards. Um, and we don't know because they are so elusive. They are really hard to track, really hard to find um, because they're really good at hiding. Um, and they live in really, really remote areas. So um, we don't know how many are in the wild, but um, their numbers are declining because um, they are known to be hunted for their fur. Um, you can see how beautiful their coat is, and that can be, um, that can be, they can be hunted for that fur, it can be sold for a lot of money, and so that is probably the main reason why they um, are declining. It's also potentially to habitat um, destruction. Um, the more that people spread out, the less area that these cats have um, to live in. Um, so, I, like I said, they live in um, the eastern Himalayans and Siberian mountains. That includes about 12 countries, and so they're known to be found in China and Nepal, Russia, Mongolia, and a lot of other places. Um, and their closest relative is the tiger. And so they look very different, and they are very different from tigers, but genetically they are closest, uh, closely related to tigers. Um, so their adaptations, let's talk about some cool adaptations. So when you look at um, the snow leopard, the first thing I notice is their giant long tail. So I can show you their tail. Um, these snow leopards are known to be four to five feet long and their tail can sometimes be as long as their body. And so they have an extremely long tail and it's very fluffy and thick with lots of fur. And so that fur um, creates insulation. And so like this mount is set up, um, what they do is when they sleep is they wrap their tail around their body to keep them warm. And so they um, are able to insulate their body and um, be able to stay warm in the really cold temperatures. Um, they also use their tail as balance. And so what they do is they are walking across really steep mountains and really steep cliffs, um, really slippery with ice and snow. And so they um, need as much balance as they can get. And so they have these really long tails to balance their body so that they can um, hunt and run away on really steep, um, risky terrain. And so they use their tails to balance their body. Um, another adaptation that these um, snow leopards have is their paws. And so they have these huge, huge paws 
that mimic, um, they mimic snowshoes. And so they're really, really big and they have um, a wide surface area. And so they can distribute the snow leopard's weight so that they can walk on top of the snow instead of um, sinking into the snow and getting cold. So they are able to stay on top of the snow and um, that helps them be able to move and to um, be able to hunt for food and not get stuck in the deep snow. Um, also, their fur. We talked about how it is, they're hunted for their fur because it is so beautiful, um, but their fur is very, very thick. So it keeps them warm just like their tail and because they live in such a cold climate. Um, and it also is, um, helps them camouflage. And so in the Himalayans, um, the main colors are just gonna be white from the snow and um, dark like gray and black for the rocks. And so these cats are um, black and cream um, they've got their gray, blackish spots, and then their cream, whitish base to be able to blend in with the colors around them. Um, and that is another thing that makes them so hard to find is because they're really, really good at camouflage and they can blend in with their surroundings really, really well. Um, I actually am going to play for you um, their sound. So these are the only cats that, um, the big cats that don't roar. So they make a different sound. They growl and purr. Um, and here is an example. Let me pull it up really fast. This is um, provided by the San Diego Zoo website. Um, but they make a unique sound. I'll play it for you. So yeah, that's the noise that they make. They make a deep growl, and so they don't roar like a lion, um, and so it's very different. Um, but they use that to communicate, to um, pronounce their territory, to um, scare away predators, things like that. Um, and another thing that I wanted to talk about really fast is um, the difference between a snow leopard and a clouded leopard. A lot of people think that they um, are the same thing, or um, they're just um, synonymous, the same name for the same kind of animal, but they're different. Um, clouded leopards are also found in Asia, but um, they're found in tr more tropical regions. And so they um, are found in tropical forests and in warmer climates. And so their fur is very different. Um, it's more sleek and it's not as insulated. And the patterns are a lot different. They have large spots that are full, um, filled with um, a dark color in these um, snow leopards have smaller spots and a more cream base than the clouded leopard. So if you didn't know the difference, that is the difference. All right, so now I'm going to carry you guys over to another um, animal that we're going to talk about their adaptation for. And here you can see, I'll give you a big scan of our Asia animal exhibit. And so here are some other animals. But we're going to move on over to the sloth bears. So here are the sloth bears. We have two sloth bears right here. Um, and sloth bears are really unique. Um, sloth bears are found, hold on one second. Okay, so um, they are found in the class Mammalia, so they're mammals. Um, their order is Carnivora. Their family is Ursidae. And their genus and species is Melursus. Ursinus. So um, these are found in the bear family Ursidae. And so they are related to polar bears and black bears and grizzly bears and panda bears. And those are really well known bears. Um, but then there are also um, some not as well known bears like the sloth bear or the sun bear or the speckled bear. Those are some other bears that are in the Ursidae group. Um, so these are found in Asia, specifically the countries of India, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. Um, and they're listed as vulnerable because of habitat destruction. And so um, their um, places that they are, can live are limited. Um, and so that is decreasing their numbers and making um, less and less found in the wild. Um, but they have some really cool, unique adaptations. So the first is kind of where they get their name, the sloth bear, is these big, big claws right here. So you can see how long and thick and sharp these claws are, and they're similar to a sloth's. Um, and they use these claws um, to get their food. And so 
Um, it's kind of confusing because they are in the order carnivora, which sounds like they um, are carnivores, but these bears are actually in the group um, Miracophagus, which means that they eat um, basically just ants and termites. So kind of like an anteater, um, they, their main diet is ants and termites. That's why we have a termite hill here to show um, what they eat on a regular basis. And so their adaptations are specific to what they eat to those ants and termites. So they use these claws to be able to break down these almost rock solid termite hills. Um, they need something really hard and really sharp to be able to break it down and to be able to open it up so that they can um, be able to get to inside to where all the ants and termites are. And so they use their claws to um, break down those hills. Um, another adaptation that they have is a lot to do with their muzzle. And so they've got a unique nose, they've got unique lips, and they've got unique teeth. So first we're gonna talk about the nose. And so their nose, you can see, is shaped odd because it has this sort of flap um, that can basically just close and shut off their nose. And so what happens is when they're trying to eat their termites and ants, um, they don't want the termites and ants to go up their nose. These ants and termites are probably pretty angry that this bear is eating them, and so it's gonna try to fight back and um, swarm. And so what this bear does is it closes its eyes and it closes its nose so that um, the termites can't get in there. And so it protects its nose from getting irritated by the, um, the termites. And then they have these unique lips. Um, I'll show you our other bear too. He's got big long lips. And so these lips are very unique because they, because they are longer, um, they're able to create a sort of vacuum. And so they can um, kind of make their way around the mouth to make a, a small hole to be able to suck up the ants and termites. Um, and because they have these, this, these unique lips, they also have no front teeth. So if you can see that in these mounts, they are missing the two front teeth. So they have their other teeth, they have their canines, but their two front incisors are missing because that creates a hole for them to um, suck up and create a vacuum to get their food. And so both of these bears are missing their front teeth and that is found in the adult soft bears, um, which is really unique to most animals are not missing their front teeth. Um, they also have their canines right here. You can see, oh, it's a little blurry, there you go. Um, their canines are um, really large and really sharp and that's how they are able to protect themselves. They have really big claws because their main predator is tigers. That's where um, tigers live as well, is in their area. And so um, they protect themselves from tigers using their canines and their big long claws. Um, and they do something called charging where they will run really, really fast towards something that is um, threatening them to intimidate it and to scare it off. And so. These bears are really fast and um, they look kind of cute and cuddly, but they're not. They're pretty, pretty feisty animals and they will protect themselves. Um, another unique thing about these bears, you can recognize them by that U or Y shaped um, cream color on their chest. Uh, that's found in almost all of the sloth bears. And then on the females, they actually have a saddle on their back. And so it's an extra um, flap of skin um, that is a little bit longer and a little bit, um, I guess, stretchier for their babies. So when they have their young, um, for the first six to nine months, they will carry their babies on their back. And um, they use that saddle on the back to, for the babies to hold on to. And so they'll carry them on their back, unlike most other bears. And so you can see, I, don't, I can't tell if these ones are males or females, um, but this is about how big they are. These are adults. Um, but yeah, that is the sloth bear. And if you guys have any more questions, you can um, comment them on this video as well. But we're gonna move on to the Segas. So these Segas are in the class, or in the, um, yeah, the class Mammalia. The order is Arctodactyla, and the family is Bovidae. And their genus and species is um, Sega tacterica. So these guys are pretty funny looking animals. They're very closely related to um, other types of antelope, which are like Garenuk or the Springbok. And so they are mostly related to them. They are herd animals, and so they travel in really, really big groups. 
Um, but the main thing that we notice when we look at them is these ginormous noses. They're really unique noses. Um, let me see if I can get underneath here too so you can see up the nose. They've got these huge, huge nostrils, which makes them look really, really funny, kind of like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. Um, but they are critically endangered. We're going to first talk about where they're found. They're critically endangered. Um, they used to be found all over um, the Eurasian steppe, which is the temperate grassland and savanna of Europe and Asia. Um, but now they're only really found in Russia and Kyrgyzstan, in those, in those areas, in the savannas. And so their numbers have um, declined a lot um, due to habitat destruction and also disease. Um, disease travels and is able to spread really, really fast in herd animals, and so that has wiped some of their population out. Um, but let's talk about their noses. So their noses are very unique. They drape over their mouth, um, and they're very long. And so inside, they're lined with um, hairs and with um, mucus and with glands. And so these noses have two main purposes. Um, the first purpose is to warm the air that they breathe. So they live in um, very cold climates. Um, it's very cold and dry, kind of like Utah. It's cold and dry. Um, and so what they do is their nose is able to warm and moisten the air that they breathe um, before it gets to their lungs. And so they have a longer canal for a nose, and so it was able to warm that air up. Um, so it's easier to breathe for them. And then the second use of their nose is to be a filter. And so because they are herd animals, um, they will run together and kick up a lot of dust. Because they live in savannas, um, there's not a ton of vegetation, so there's just a lot of grass and a lot of dirt. And so they kick up a lot of dust, and so the air that they breathe has a lot of particles in it. And so their nose acts as a filter. And so those hairs, the mucus, the glands are able to catch all of the, the dust and dirt that gets in their um, air and it cleans it. So when it gets to their lungs, it is clean air and it's not full of particles. And so this helps these animals be able to breathe better um, and to be able to um, not have, it's like a mouthful of dust, you just don't want that. Um, but another unique um, adaptation that they have is their coat. Um, it's thicker than most coats um, of antelope because of their cold climate that they live in. And it changes colors, and so that's called a molt when an animal's um, coat changes colors. And in the summer, they are a cinnamon color, um, like this kind of. They're probably summer um, segas. Um, but in the winter, they are a paler color. And so they, um, De their color just gets paler and um, it's mainly for uh, blending with their surroundings because in the winter there's not as many, as the plants are more dead and so um, it makes it easier for them to blend in with their surroundings. Um, another unique um, fact about these segas is um, they have these horns and those horns are found on males um, and their noses are actually very similar to a whale's nose. They are not related to whales whatsoever, but um, structurally it's very similar to how a whale's nose um, is structured. And um, their babies, um, these animals are meant to run, and so when their babies are born, um, after two days their um, offspring can run faster than a human. And so because of that, these animals um, can be able to get up and move very soon once their life starts, and so that's able to protect them from predators um, and allow them to keep up with their pack. Um, but that is all I have today on, let me flip this around. That is all I have today on our Asian animals. Um, if you guys have any more questions about these animals or any other animals um, in the Bean Museum, we'd love to answer them. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.